chapter six of fuel of fire this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org fuel of fire by ellen thornycroft fowler chapter six rufus webb o lord i knew thou were austere and so my heart was filled with fear and dared not count thy creatures dear in awe of thy great name and if my terror of thy rod has left my heart a lifeless clod untouched by love for man or god dread lord am i to blame i have no patience with alicia baxendale said mrs fairfax to her daughter that same afternoon why not mother she talks so much nonsense she does but if it is any pleasure to her i don't see why she shouldn't she has precious little pleasure in her life poor thing not at all she has a good son and that is pleasure enough for any woman argued mrs fairfax who had never quite forgiven faith for having been born a girl instead of a boy a youthful error which it is difficult to rectify in after life but mother think of coming to live in that little farmhouse after being mistress of baxendale hall and then of drawbridge castle hum that was a come down i admit and she really bears it beautifully it is always horrid to be poor and most especially for a woman brought up as lady alicia was well it is a great deal her own fault that she and lawrence are so poor now if she had been less extravagant when she was first married poor alwyn would not have lived beyond his income as he did still it wasn't altogether her own fault that she was extravagant remember the way in which she was brought up really faith the way you have of always sticking up for the absent is most aggravating i believe if any one said that the devil himself was not altogether a nice character you'd find some excuse for him in the way he was brought up faith smiled her sweet smile but as a matter of fact he was brought up among the angels so i'm afraid i couldn't find much excuse for him on that score well then you'd say he had been too well brought up which comes to the same thing nowadays by the way what are you going to do this afternoon i'm going to see mr webb and to take him some flowers you are a wonderful woman faith you are always doing something for somebody else's happiness i wonder if you ever think of your own my child it doesn't do much good thinking of one's own replied faith rather wistfully she did not consider it necessary to add that hers was bound up in lawrence faxendale and that the truth was slowly dawning upon her that his in turn was bound up in nancy burton there is a good deal of setting to corners in this world you would have made an ideal clergyman's wife continued her mother reflectively you are energetic and capable and amiable and unselfish and you have not the ghost of an idea how to dress yourself or to do your hair faith only laughed unmarried women with energy mrs fairfax went on remind me of those horrid motor-cars which when some unforeseen obstacle stops their career have no power of standing still but plough up the earth all around them and dig their own graves there are scores of single women in england digging their own graves with wasted and unappropriated energy i am afraid there are mother but it isn't altogether their own fault poor things and faith left the room with a sigh rufus webb for whom faith had designed her flowers lived alone in a little white gabled house on the lanes leading from the ways to fairyland but the gates of this latter were forever closed to him those who have once heard these gates shut to behind them can never enter that magic territory again but for them as for all of us there is still prepared some better country which shall forever cast fairyland into the shade a country of green pastures and living waters and cities whose foundations are of jasper and gold in short a country where a fairyland at its best is but a type and an image where we shall find as abiding realities the things of which in fairyland we only dreamed rufus was a big red-haired and red-bearded man of about fifty originally he had been a missionary but the great tragedy which spoiled his life had likewise cut short his career and now he lived in the cottage at the ways as a guide philosopher and friend to all the poor people for miles around he had a certain knowledge of medicine which he had studied in his missionary days and which he had practised successfully among his chinese converts and this knowledge he exercised for the benefit of all the cottagers in the neighbourhood who were too poor to employ a doctor on their own account and too proud to do so at the expense of the parish 
but he never preached now nor had he done so since he left china twenty years ago he had passed condemnation upon himself as unfit for god's ministry and no arguments could induce him to take up his sacred office again he was a man subject to terrible fits of religious depression and spiritual anguish when he believed that the heavens were closed against him and the face of god was turned away from him but through it all he was faithful to the god whom he maligned though he slay me yet will i trust in him was his cry and he believed that god would indeed slay him were it desirable and would have no pity i am willing to be eternally damned should my damnation redound to the glory of god was his heartfelt confession and he knew not as yet that such servile submission to divine power was an injustice toward divine love good afternoon mr webb i have brought you some flowers said faith as rufus opened the door to her and showed her into his bare little sitting-room i know you are fond of them thank you miss fairfax i am replied he taking from her the bouquet which he had prepared for him and sniffing its scent with the epicurean delight of the born flower-lover for a moment his stern face softened as he gazed into the hearts of the roses then suddenly it hardened again as he threw the posy upon the floor and trampled its soft petals beneath his feet and because i am fond of them i destroy them he cried his voice metallic with suppressed suffering is this a time to be gathering flowers and going down into the garden of spices to see whether the pomegranates have budded nay it is rather a time to be girding oneself with sackcloth and covering one's head with ashes for the day of the lord is at hand and who shall abide the day of his coming faith looked pitifully at the bruised roses and at the man who was yet more cruelly bruised and even if his day is at hand is that any reason why we should despise his gifts she asked gently he brings no wreath of flowers but rather a crown of thorns and in his hands is a sword which shall pierce us to the quick shall be not deceived it is only by self-repression and self-renunciation that men can attain unto salvation and not all of them even then yes mr webb self-repression and self-renunciation for another's sake by all means but not merely for the pain's sake i can see that god would be pleased with you who loved flowers so much if you gave them up to some one whom you thought needed them more but i cannot see that you will please him by trampling them under your feet and so spoiling them for yourself and everybody else child blind not yourself by vain words the god whom you serve is a jealous god and he will brook no rival in the hearts of sinful men remember that those who love houses or lands gardens or flowers more than him are not worthy of him and from such he shall hide his face in anger faith looked up with sweet severity no one would be so foolish as to love the gift more than the giver but it is for the sake of the giver that one loves the gift and the more so the more one loves him do not tempt me rufus cried walking up and down the small room as was his custom when at all moved for his sake i have put away from me all pleasant things and have abjured the world with its many delights in the hope that when he sees my anguish and humiliation he may turn again to me and forgive me my sin you do him an injustice believe me he did not make the world so beautiful only in order to torture us with unsatisfied longings he gives us every good gift in order that we in our gratitude may love him all the more and it is because we love him that we find his gifts so fair i do not think that we ever properly enjoy a fair landscape or a beautiful sunset until we realize that he is in it all and through it all and beyond it all just as we never enjoy any other books or pictures as much as we enjoy those that are written and painted by the hands we love rufus was silent so faith being a wise woman changed the subject i wish you would let me lend you some books mr webb they would divert your mind and rest you altogether i read no books but my bible that is enough for me and it ought to be enough for all we ought not to read other books instead of our bibles persisted faith with sweet placidity but i don't see why we shouldn't read them as well what sort of books would you wish me to read asked rufus and his voice was very stern but it took more than sternness to frighten faith i would advise you to read novels she calmly replied i think there are few things which rest one's mind and divert one's thoughts as much as reading good novels and i am sure that just now you are sorely in need of such rest and diversion again rufus began to stride up and down the small room like some caged wild animal 
read novels do you say why i would rather pluck out my right eye than that it should offend by reading such trash as novels but i would advise you to read such novels as are not trash persisted faith all novels are trash and what is worse they are vanity and lies child do you not know that whosoever loveth and maketh a lie shall have part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone those who write novels make and love a lie and those who read what they have written are like unto them then would you call all forms of art vanity and lies too pictures and statues and poems for instance i would and if i had my way i would burn them all so that they should not lure the souls of men to destruction burn books and pictures gasped faith yea every one of them on which i could lay my hand for they are indeed the false gods and graven images which we are forbidden to worship and is it not better that they should be destroyed by earthly fire than that men's souls should be destroyed by the fire which is never quenched but art would never destroy men's souls it is a revelation or rather an interpretation of truth and so is meant to bring men nearer to god instead of driving them away from him child child do not prophesy vain things all false gods shall be destroyed and likewise those who have set them up and worshipped them persisted rufus growing more and more excited look at that fine house yonder he continued pointing to the top of the hill where baxendale hall gleamed red among the trees is it not written that it shall once more be made fuel of fire and blessed shall be the day that sees it reduced to ashes and blessed shall be the hand that sets it alight raise it raise it raise it even to the ground until not one stone shall be left upon another mr webb you don't mean what you say think of the trouble it would be to mr baxendale if the home of his fathers which is so dear to him were to be burned to the ground and surely he has had trouble and disappointment enough in his life already without your wishing this final blow to fall on him i do wish it my soul yearns over the soul of lawrence baxendale and i pray that whatever comes between his soul and god may perish for ever have you forgotten that other young man who went away sorrowful because he had great possessions and shall i sit still and see this young man also condemn himself to the outer darkness because he loves houses and lands better than the god who made him no baxendale has once more to be made fuel of fire by something which is greater and stronger and higher than king or state and that i hold to be the fear of god i think there is no need for baxendale hall to be burned in order to teach lawrence to fear god and to keep his commandments he has learned that lesson already from god himself and his dead father maybe but science falsely so called in pleasant pictures and the sorcerer's spells which men call novels are fast blinding his eyes to the hidden things of god's law and are making him of the earth earthy nevertheless the lord shall destroy them in his displeasure and the fire shall consume them you have no right to say such things of mr baxendale replied faith for the first time showing signs of a weak spot in her almost perfect temper he is the best and noblest and most unselfish man i ever met the young man in the gospels had kept every commandment from his youth up yet his great possessions were the undoing of him child listen to me i love lawrence baxendale though i had sworn never to love mortal man or woman again to my everlasting shame i love him i who had abjured human love as a snare of the evil one and i pray that his house and his books and his pictures may be destroyed by fire before he is offended past forgiveness that god who hath said ye shall have none other gods but me there is no possibility of offending that god past forgiveness said faith softly so i thought when i was your age groaned the fanatic sinking exhausted into a chair and burying his face in his hands but i fell away from my high calling i loved the creature rather than the creator and now outer darkness is reserved for me for ever and because i love lawrence baxendale love him against my will and against my vows and against my conscience i would destroy my soul again were it possible to save him from the pit wherein i have fallen myself you are unjust to lawrence but you are still more unjust to god child you know not what you say did you ever hear my story asked rufus looking up and faith's anger against him died down before the abject misery of his face no please tell it to me she said gently seeing that silence and loneliness had well nigh thrown webb's brain off the balance and believing that confession even to her would be good for his soul i was the child of stern and godly parents and was brought up by them in the fear of god and in the knowledge that his all-seeing eye was ever upon me to mark iniquity should i do amiss with all my heart i strove to obey his word and to fulfil his precepts and to keep his laws like the infant samuel i had been dedicated to his service from my birth and when i was old enough i took holy orders and offered myself 
as a missionary so that i might go forth and make known his word among the heathen and among the kingdoms that had not called upon his name yes i understand said faith and encouraged by her evident sympathy rufus proceeded but a few months before i started for china the spot to which the church had seen fit to appoint me i met a woman a young and beautiful woman and i the man set apart by god to bear upon the mountains his tidings of peace turned away from my high calling and loved this one woman with all my heart and with all my strength and with all my soul and with all my mind loved her as i ought to have loved my god and as you would have loved him if men had not lied to you about him added faith softly so softly that rufus did not hear her but went on so i married her and took her out with me to china and i loved her my god how i loved her my little lettuce i who had given up all human love for the sake of the cross having put my hand to the plough turned back because of the beauty of a woman yes i loved the curls at the back of her neck and the dimple on the one side of her mouth and the way her eyelashes turned backward making stars of her pretty eyes and to my shame i remember all these things and love them still for the which god will bring me to judgment again i say you are doing god an injustice your love for her ought to have taught you something of his love for you instead of which you turn his good gift into one of the nails whereby you have crucified him afresh for surely annas and caiaphas did not misjudge him more terribly than you have done but he punished me rufus went on heedless of the interruption our god is indeed a jealous god the idols which we worship instead of him shall be cut down and cast into the fire and wherewithal a man sinneth by the same also shall he be punished i let her deck herself with fine garments though i ought to have known that a meek and quiet spirit is the only adornment which becomes a woman i let her read novels though i ought to have known that she who loveth a lie is no whit better than he who maketh a lie and i let her laugh and sing all over my house though i ought to have said of laughter it is mad and of mirth what doeth it and for this also will god bring me to judgment then what became of this beautiful woman whom you loved and married listen and i will tell you and then you will see what a terrible thing it is to fight against the living god but you are fighting against him still argued faith every good gift and every perfect gift comes from him be it the beauty of art the glory of nature or the joy of human love and we are fighting against him when we refuse to accept humbly his gifts and to let them draw us nearer to him rufus did not seem to hear what faith was saying the memory of the past was so strong upon him that for the time being it effaced the present i took lettuce out with me to china and for a year we were ideally happy together so happy that god was wroth with us for letting mere human bliss fill the place in our hearts which ought to have been filled by him then there was a rising out there against the missionaries and the mission house was besieged i and my brethren held out for as long as we could but our adversaries were too many and too strong for us and at last we were overpowered and taken prisoners and your wife what became of her was she taken prisoner too do you think i was going to let her fall into the hands of those yellow devils not i when i heard the walls crash in and knew that our enemies were upon us i shot her dead with my own hand shot the tender heart which had lain upon my own and dabbled the pretty hair in blood for love of her and to save her from a fate which i could not bear to contemplate i broke god's commandment which saith thou shalt not kill and so lost my own soul in order to save her body from torture and for love of her i would do the same again yea even were my punishment ten times greater than it is faith was almost breathless with interest and you did not try to kill yourself as well no i should have held it a cowardly act to save myself from the consequences of my disobedience to god's word the chinese made me and my comrades prisoners intending to torture us to death and i welcomed their tortures as some meet punishment for the sin i had committed but god in his justice saw fit to make my punishment even greater than a lingering death at the hands of the chinese when two of us were dead and two dying we were four in all relief came and we two survivors were rescued and since then my soul has suffered agonies compared with which my bodily sufferings in that chinese prison were as nothing faith's gray eyes were full of tears poor mr webb i am so sorry for you i don't wonder after all you have suffered that you have formed false ideas of god and i am sure that he doesn't wonder either but rufus did not hear her his eyes had grown dreamy and his thoughts were far away she had such pretty eyes he murmured half to himself and when she smiled she nearly shut them which gave her a dreamy look as if she were smiling at something which other people could not see and she never could keep her hair neat though she used to laugh and say that a clergyman's wife ought at any rate to be tidy but how could i blame her when it went into such dear little curls at the back of her neck as soft as silk and as yellow as gold and as for the dimple in her cheek but faith did not stay to hear more she felt that she was treading on holy ground 
not intended for any feet save those of the woman who was dead so she slipped out of the room and out of the house and rufus webb never heard her go being lost for the time in the memory of a dimple which had been dust for twenty years End of chapter six